We are the oldest conference in the world about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. We call La Bitcoin, Latin America Bitcoin. And we are doing this uh, after 10 years. Rodolfo is the founder and the actual uh, director and manager of conference. And we are so, so glad to come be in El Salvador. We choose a different city each year. And this is a, is a real huge uh, challenge for us, change the city all the years, change the, the country. Yes, actually, actually when we come to a country, we, we do a, like a scouting as everyone does, yes, but it's not only a scouting about the venue, this is about the uh, scouting about the spirit, about the culture, about the, the what's there to say about the city. So it's not only a conference. Actually, you have like this concept, which is it's not a conference; it's a whole experience. And we try to drive that experience, that country experience, that country culture, also into the into the event. Yes, as part of the of the event, we usually have like a very high tire content based on the fact that we were not only the longest running, as Diana said, in the world, but also the first one in Latin America. And so it was always very attractive for speakers to think, oh, eventually I should go to Latin America and see what's happening there. So, so since the first one in which we had the very best main speakers in 2013, all thinking about what was going on in Argentina when currency controls were high uh, in place in the, in the country. Yes, we had the very, very, very best speakers at the, at the time from Butterfly Labs, which finally disappeared as a mining company, and Bitcoin Jesus, which is Roger Beer, that then time later became like, like well, for some, like the Bitcoin Judas. Uh, actually, we, we kept that quality of speakers, yes, year after year, country after country, and moving the venue, the, the conference to a different country every year, it's, it's also for adding new value, new new experiences, yes, to the speakers that usually uh, follow us, yes, like Skase, uh, um, well, Joshua, uh, se several of the speakers that usually come to the to, to the event, Antolopoulos and, and, and others, you know? So it's a very, very cool event with not only high level content, but with also a very interesting experience and, and networking activities. Just to give you examples, we did uh, from horseback riding and paintball to to uh, live fights in, in in Mexico and salt mines in in Colombia with the church inside, and so it's, it's all also about the culture. Yes, and here we will have a lot of fire and stuff like that. So, how many how many people are uh, expected to be in attendance next week? I know. Uh, uh, different different kinds of attendees, different kinds of people. You know? uh, we we in what has to do with speaker sponsors and such. Yes, we have already like uh, one hundred and ten sponsors speakers. Yes, and about fifty sponsors. So that gives you a level of of amount of relations you will be doing. Yes, among the um, among businesses. Yes, but beyond mm -hmm. that, uh, we do expect around two thousand five hundred people, something like that. Uh, because the event is focused mainly in or Salvadorian people, yes. Mm -hmm. The concept is is trying to drive them into into white Bitcoin beyond the Chivo, the the, the law, the remittances. You know, it's why Bitcoin is such a powerful tool. And mm -hmm. so so we are doing open free event, yes, a conference for for people to join and, and, and enjoy also all the activities that, that we will be doing around the conference. That's great that it's just open and free. So do you have Bitcoin use cases integrated into the conference? Can people, you know, use Lightning to, I don't know, purchase refreshments or things like that? Yes, actually, yes, in everything. <laughs> it's the only yeah. conference, I guess, yet the only conference in the world that plays its uh, sponsorship tires only uh, in BTC. Yes, there was no no dollar value of the tires. Our yes. perks are only in BTC. Yes, all, all the oh, wow. other 
proposition value, it only BTC, it doesn't matter if it was 40K or 60K, yes? Sponsorship were based only BTC. The tickets were sold only BTC. And, and we will have a Mercadito, which is a... Um, Some craft made. Yes, Some craft. craft. Yes, and all payments will be done in BTC with Lightning. And, and then during the event, you don't need to pay anything. So there's no much other stuff to pay. That's amazing. So how long has it been? Like, what is the story of, of Bitcoin in these conferences? Was it always um, Bitcoin only? Or did you kind of start with all crypto as a lot of people do and then move to Bitcoin only? Or how did you come to that? Well, I, depends. <laughs> Being a conference that started in 2013, yes, mm -hmm. blockchain was not even a concept back then. Yes, everyone spoke only about Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. After, we are not only the longest running, we are the only conference, yes, that started back then that kept the name Bitcoin in it. So when you say that most people start in crypto, this is absolutely not the way we didn't even start on this. Yes, we, we were absolutely on the other side of the of the road. Yes, we were mm -hmm. all always very Bitcoin focused, but we are not only Bitcoin focused. That's the difference. Yes, we we you might if you check the the, the rosters and the agenda, it looks like a ninety percent Bitcoin strength. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. we won't shield any. Uh, for example, during the ICOs, we didn't shield any single ICO. Yes, during the the blockchain explosion, we didn't shield any blockchain explosion. So, so we are mainly Bitcoin focused, but not with the concept of Bitcoin everything. Yes, Bitcoin mm. for digital ID, and for I don't know, things, huh? um, so yes, yeah, we are not thinking Bitcoin also for uh, transparency in in I don't know what process in a in a in a medical health institution yes so so we also bring blockchain as a complementary tool for all the social relations that people might go into no and and as an option we we mm -hmm. do believe strongly believe we are mostly maximalist ourselves yes mm -hmm. maximalist I more like a strong believer, yes, uh, and uh, objectivist about Bitcoin. Uh, but uh, yes, we do have like a this maximalism in Bitcoin, but we do understand that that the blockchain also, yes, other blockchain implementations, mostly our talks on blockchain are mostly related to second layers in Bitcoin eventually, yes. But, mm -hmm. but the blockchain also might have some role in, in the future of society. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Do you, do you have um, a stance as a conference on, on uh, non-fungible tokens or how, how, how do you parse uh, kind of the gray waters there? Right. Gray waters, excellent, excellent option. I guess the NFT, uh, movement and nft fever we are living right now is like the fever of icos a couple of years ago and yeah. always in the conference we try to touch the important topics but in a different way so even if you have thousands of nft where maybe don't have a value that doesn't have a, something meaningful to say you have another artist who are really really are taking the NFT like a tool for make something valuable and grow in the art place. So in, in order to that, we bring some artists from Miami, from Colombia, Masna and all his team will be at the conference making art on live, uh, painting over the uh, surf table. Uh, I don't know. Yes, we bought yes. like 15 surfboards, yes. We will have 15 artists doing live art on the surface. Mm -hmm. And those, yes, will become like a collection, NFT collections, yes. But as as, as conference, we are not NFTers, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we just understand that this is something that it's occurring, 
yes, around, and we we are skeptic eventually about the about the stuff, but we allow people to take their own decisions. I'm not on the side of of deciding for people. I think that we need to to teach, we need to show, yes, and people need to understand. In this is different than ICOs, yes. I feel all ICOs were a were a value selling pitch of a value proposition, a future value proposition. Yes. Here is, is okay, you're buying art, like it or not, you might be doing it because of economic understanding of future value. I don't care, but actually you're buying art, and that's it. You're, you're not buy, buying a future uh, outcome of a proposition of this art. You're, ex, you're speculating eventually on the value of a certain art, yes? Not on the future outcome of me as a company pre-selling all my stocks and you get it so so it's a different concept i think we need to be clear when explaining about these topics yes but we are not um active ourselves we did invite people mm -hmm. to live art on server because that's an experience part of the experience around the bitcoin yes but it's not the main focus and as the bitcoin is part of a bigger uh, NGO. This is all non for profit. Yes, of the conference that's, that we've been doing since 2013. This is also the unique. Unique. We are in in, in this sense. The the since since then we've been doing this non for profit, and this NGO which is behind uh, also is leading a a, a a Premio de Arte, which is like a, a artist exhibition. Yeah. Yes, that we are showing the the results um, on the event, yes. And, and we are teaching artists about NFT. This is not a bit, yes, this is a, the other aspect, uh, but not through the NFT concept, but rather to find artistic ways of explaining Bitcoin. Yes, mm -hmm. not a nice Bitcoin logo. Expressing through art what Bitcoin means for society. It's freedom, passion, or the value, the, the, the distraction, I don't know, whatever, no? Mm -hmm. so, so we Revolution. try to find a way of, of Bitcoin being in the core of, the, of, of all the other things that occur, because we do believe it's most yeah, of and, what you will be doing. And also Bitcoin is a social movement. I don't know, we are starting something here, even if we are early adopters. And I guess this initiative from the NGO Bitcoin Argentina and Bitcoin Iberoamerica to make a, a prize in, in NFT and promote the artists get into the Bitcoin culture, may that start to uh, make it massive and open the doors for the, not only for the Bitcoin maximalists, for everybody to, to touch everybody with the art so th that is that is the idea open the doors and find another way to to send the messenger for everybody excellent so change, what what should what, change what, the what, narrative maybe yeah what, what's your gre greatest hope for someone uh, who walks into the conference what do you hope they learn and, and what kind of experience do you want them to walk away with we are seeders, yes. We try to seed ideas in and concepts. Yes, we don't we don't move forward, yes, from that. It's, it's we plant trees, we don't plant forests. And mm -hmm. and I think that um, it, my hope is changing at least 10, 15 people's mind, yes, about about Bitcoin as as a powerful tool for the future of them, their children, and stuff like that. Yes, uh, and and from there, those seeds became trees and plants and 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 flowers that then create more trees and plants and flowers and like that. No, it's I, I, I never I'm never ambitious about stuff. Yes, I I just want to help people to change their understanding about reality related in this case, related to, to Bitcoin's role in, in the future. Mm -hmm. right. And I guess 
uh, I don't know, my first conference was, uh, my first LabitConf was in Colombia four years ago. Uh, and also I wish for the people who come to the conference, they find a little what I found uh, four years ago, an uh, amazing community and people trying to help and maybe why not 10 or five people here make a Bitcoiner friends, make a La Bitcoin friends and become part of the community. Not only uh, learn something and take the tools, become part of this. And, mm -hmm. and I guess it will be so nice if one, five or 10 people arrive to feel that and to be part of this. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, um, I am. I, sorry, I am a little bit cursy with the, with this idea. Oh Just, no, I love it. I love that idea. Um, how how do you see this progressing into the future? Do we take the conference and move to the next country to adopt Bitcoin, or you know, you talked about Argentina. Are you? making efforts there to um, educate uh, political parties or? We've been, since 2013, I thought the main, uh, uh, well, we found that the, the main uh, NGO in, in Argentina actually is the main NGO in the region. And, and we, I, we've been supportive to other NGOs around the region too. And, and yes, we do. We, I always believe that Bitcoin is politics, yes. But we are not very active into the political aspect. Yes, we're more grass, grass movers than grassroots movers than than political lobbyists. Yes, we, as I say, we expect to change people's minds, not not others. Yes, it's like helping people, usually from below. But mm -hmm. but and this conference is a bit different. Yes, this conference has specific objectives, which are not the ones that I, in my soul, care about the Bitcoin itself, yes, but it's about something about itself, yes. So yes, we do expect that lots of people just understand that Bitcoin is beyond the political aspect of Bitcoin being done here, yes, that Bitcoin is beyond the Chivo here. Uh, but the other aspect is also attracting investors from abroad to El Salvador. So here we do have a political, more political objective and more high level objectives than, than in general, yes? Because it, it makes sense. All right, Bitcoiners, I want to tell you about our newest sponsor. This show is brought to you by Ledin.io. I have been super, super impressed with the guys over at Ledin. I've actually known the co-founders, Adam and Mauricio, for a very long time. I've had the pleasure to watch them build Ledin up from a tiny, tiny startup to now a super impressive institutional grade Bitcoin and crypto lender. Y'all. I'm so impressed with these guys. They are offering some of the best rates out there. I don't think anyone even comes close to touching them. You can get 6.1% APY on your first two Bitcoin that you deposit into lead and interest accounts. And you can get 8.5% US on USDC deposits. I mean, I know all the competitors. They're not even close. If you're going to put your crypto and your Bitcoin into an interest account, Ledin is by far the best. And on top of that, like I said, these guys are hardcore Bitcoiners and they know the products and the services that Bitcoiners want and appreciate. They come up with B2X. It allows you to put your Bitcoin in, they leverage it up, and you can, with one click of the mouse, get twice the exposure to Bitcoin. So if you're super bullish, Ledin has you covered with a super, super easy way to get leverage with B2X. And then on top of that, they know that Bitcoiners care about your reserves. They know that Bitcoiners don't like under-reserved and not full-reserved financial institutions. So they are pushing the frontier in transparency in the digital asset lending space. And they are the first digital asset lender to do a full proof of reserves and proof of attestation through a Mariano LLC, a public accounting firm. So the letting guys, they know what Bitcoin is like. They are legit. I encourage you guys to check them out. Do your own research and go to ledin.io, that is L-E-D-N.io, and learn more. 
Yo, what is going on, plebs? We're going to take a break from our programming to tell you about the resurrection of our print magazine, starting with the El Salvador issue. Starting this fall, Bitcoin Magazine will be available on newsstands nationwide and at retail stores such as Barnes & Noble. Don't want to get off your couch, though? No problem. You can also go to store.bitcoinmagazine.com. So skip the line and get each issue shipped directly to your front door with our annual subscription. I'm talking four issues a year that contain exclusive interviews and profiles with leading Bitcoiners, actionable insights on the state of the market, breaking news and cultural trends, along with powerful photos and artwork from the best artists in the world. Subscribe today and get 21% off using code podcast at checkout. That's P-O-D-C-A-S-T, podcast at checkout. Mm -hmm. And what is your, what is the value proposition to investors who are abroad, who maybe get their main source of news, you know, from, from mainstream media about Bitcoin and about El Salvador? You know, um, what do you want uh, Bitcoin Week to teach them? Like? Teach to local people? No, 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 no. To the, okay, to the, so, uh, from to the okay, I guess the first thing is uh, I feel El Salvador like a little picture of the future. That is what will happen if the Bitcoin works. Works. Why? Works. So um, I guess the conditions here to adopt Bitcoin are exceptional conditions. This country doesn't have a central bank printing money in uh, 20 years, and it's a small country and have a lot of migration. So the conditions here are really, really special. Mm -hmm. And if our one country in, in whom Bitcoin makes sense or is possible to adopt, no, um, and to put in the in the uh, day, daily life for the people is here. So I I feel like everybody have to take care of this, but it's a huge opportunity to learn and to try to to see if we are preparing for a massive adoption. To see what are the challenge for massive adoptions. Uh, how, what are the gaps between our level of knowledge and the actually concerns about the people. So I guess we don't want to teach anything to the people who come here, but I hope the people who come here watch, learn, and make, make some reflections about where are we now and what is the future. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if Rodolfo um, Complementary to this, but I, that, uh, to this uh, I would say that companies that come from abroad will find, for, for, for example, I'm doing a, an event and almost, almost all of my uh, providers did take Bitcoin. Initially, they might not, but then talking, uh, they did take Bitcoin, yes? So this is a good a good thing, and what I mean, mean my stuff is the hotel, the venue, the the provider of the surfboards, the the where I'm doing the party, and, and this is not common. Come on, <laughs> it's the first time I'm being able to pay bitcoins, uh, everything, and uh, so I guess that if you come from abroad, you might get a bit of that experience, yes, in your daily affairs. And the other big, big, huge aspect difference between having a legal tender and having just a legal currency, yes, uh, of the currency being legal, is that, in, for example, in my country, I can buy whatever I want with bitcoins. I can buy a house, a car, almost anywhere you can buy in bitcoins, yes. Actually, you can put it in the, in the contract, but you can't execute the contract uh, on bitcoins because it's not a legal tender. Yes, so mm -hmm. even though you put in the contract, executing the contract might be a, a, a concern. Um, and the other aspect is <clears throat> the main aspect, I would say, uh, if we know how things work with banks are, around the world, yes, when you have a company in different countries and they get concerned about Bitcoin, yes, they close their accounts. In a legal tender country, this is not an issue. This won't be an issue. So having bank accounts here and being related to BTC 
or crypto mm -hmm. um, might be a smarter move. Obviously, there are situations similar to Gibraltar and other places where banking is open, but I would I would say not as open, not as publicly uh, clear that you can do Bitcoin as long as you do your KYC, as long as you do your AML, as long as you do anything that you need to do, which is most exchanges do anyway, um, then you can operate freely. So I think it's a Bitcoin service heaven for, for service providers. Mm -hmm. Thinking in this way, in other countries, the, the bank closed your account if you try trade with Bitcoin. But here, mm -hmm. it's legal don't have a wallet. So it's another mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, so, and also, have, sorry, and, and having 5 million people with, with BTC, um, it also, for some, it's like the first time, actually, because it's, it's not normal. Even if you have Bitcoin as a legal tender, it's not normal for Bitcoiners being willing to pay Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's legal tender, but <laughs> I won't give you a dime of Bitcoins, I will give you my $50. So um, I guess that chances to get paid in Bitcoins anywhere are small, yes? Mm -hmm. Not if you consider that the remittances brought to the country stay in Bitcoin, which starts to happen, yes? But eventually it will turn Bitcoin to dollar and then pay. Um, but I think that, or what I've been seeing, yes, is that you have different people, owners, or or or, or people in the in the in the venues or in the services in the providers that you're going, yes, restaurants, whatever. And even if they don't have their official wallet, some might charge you anyway, you know, or have the Chivo mm -hmm. wallet and send their money to someone else or stuff like that. So, so it's a good, um, it's a very fairly good situation here for, for paying. Mm -hmm. What are some of the, the key ex events that both of you are excited about at this conference? You know, favorite event from each day, maybe. In general, excited. Actually, I'm excited about the mood of the, of the yeah. event. It's about the mood of the event. And having, it, it's all like, I mean, we don't do books. We, we, we do like, we, we did books, but it's all like a beach, beach look. Yes, all, all of the booths have surfboards and stuff like that. Um, then then we will have these artists doing stuff. It's something that it also excites mm -hmm. and artists doing live stuff. Uh, we will have performers at the end of the day, uh, musicians playing playing live, yes, the concerts, local and international. Um, I, I think that in general, I, I like, I mean, the fact that the president will be talking also, it's, it's very a key point in the, yeah. in the event. Uh, Sam Bankman Fried, also joining, which is the best, not the best, today's number one um, uh, person in the space, yes, based on, on his personal holdings. Um, so uh, Max Kayser, the uh, expectant of Max Kayser's talk in El Salvador. Um, no, I, I'm in general expectant of, I, I think it's about the mood, no? It's about, and, and also see, I also expect them to see if we achieve to get a huge amount of people, more people than the one that goes into the venue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Knows? Yeah. I hope so too. Yeah, this, this is, see, no, this, this is maybe the, the, as I say, it's maybe a, an experience that we want to share. It's not, it's not only the conference. Yes, it's. No. Like, She's having connection issues, we know. Oh, okay, yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, I'll continue. I just... Yes, yes. Actually, the, um, there is also, I, I didn't tell you, yes, but 
there are different kinds of ways of participating of the Bitcoin. Yes. Um, people can do it online. Yes. Just mm -hmm. go into, uh, we are connected with Bitcoin Magazine, so they will be able to watch the conference through Bitcoin Magazine. Uh, and if they attend, they can do like regular business uh, tickets or experience tickets. Yes. The yeah. experience tickets add additional stuff. Yes. Additional stuff on Saturday, additional stuff on Friday, parties, mood, circles. Like yeah. all, all an additional mood uh, to, to the event. No? Yeah. Yo, my fellow Bitcoin lovers, have I got something specifically curated for you? The Deep Dive is Bitcoin Magazine's premium markets intelligence newsletter. This isn't some pay group selling buy and sell signals. No, this is a premium Bitcoin analysis led by Dylan LeClaire and his team of analysts. They break down in an easily digestible way what is happening on chain in the derivatives markets and in the greater macro backdrop context for Bitcoin. This newsletter turns volatility into a joke. So hit up members.bitcoinmagazine.com and use promo code podcast for 30% off the deep dive. That's members.bitcoinmagazine.com promo code podcast for 30% off. Divorce your paid group and learn why Bitcoin is the ultimate asset by Dylan and his team. My fellow plebs, the Bitcoin conference is back. Bitcoin 2022, April 6th through the 9th is the ultimate pilgrimage for the Bitcoin ecosystem. The Bitcoin conference is the biggest event in all of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. We're leveling up and making this bigger and better than ever. I'm talking straight to the moon with the four day long festival in the heart of Miami at the Miami Beach Convention Center. This has something for everyone. Whether you're a high-powered Bitcoin entrepreneur, a core developer, or a Bitcoin newbie, Bitcoin 2022 is the ultimate place for you to be with your people and celebrate and learn about the Bitcoin culture. So make sure to go to b.tc forward slash conference to lock in your official tickets and use promo code Satoshi for 10% off. Want more off? Pay in Bitcoin and you'll receive $100 off general admission and $1,000 off whale pass. Those are stackable. So go to b.tc forward slash conference and attend the best conference in Bitcoin history. That's nice. How many, um, I saw that the, the marketing and posters and things are great, like really, really ramped up this year. I was wondering how many people uh, did the conference employ even just temporarily? How many people are helping out to build it? Four people to... That's yeah. impressive. See, no? What? So, yeah, yeah, depend. I mean, full time, only three. Uh, and and part time, it's Alex, one for the website, one for dealing, uh, not selling, but dealing the sponsored affairs, and mainly those. Yeah. Mainly those. Mm -hmm. Are there hopes to expand or are you like having a tight knit team to run your conferences? No, we just team up every single year around the conference. We, we all work on our stuff. That's yeah, great. that's one of the big problems about doing this event. We're not event organizers, though we do a very nice event. I mean, people who camps dance usually says, I don't know what La Bitcoin has, but it's like a very special uh, event. For, for several of the speakers, it's like the number one event they want to attend every single year. Se several of the ones that keep coming, yes, they, they say this from Tony, uh, Tom, Tom Bays and, and but, uh, almost uh, Eric Borges, and uh, they all really love La Bitcoin, because it has a very special spirit. It's, as I say, it's not a conference, it's, a, it's a, an experience. It's, a, it's hard for us being from Latin America to show this, but, but you tend to see this. I mean, the traders we do for the event, yes. Mm -hmm. you, you, for, for sure you haven't seen similar trailers yes, for any other event, crypto event in the space. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and doing a, a full length video of, of uh, Elon Musk going to, the, to Mars and, and being ignored by the holders that were already, already there. Yes, and, 
and and having the, last year we did the whole conference from from the moon and we had a moon party VR moon party with dinosaurs on the moon and 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 stuff like that it's like mm -hmm. it's, it's an experience it's it's different it's it's original it's 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 always different and this is because we don't charge because we this is non-commercial so we won't do an event if it's not fun for us to do it because we need to stop doing this other stuff that we're doing to, to do it so mm -hmm. so it needs to be very special or or it just wouldn't happen because we don't need to do it it's not a commercial event it sounds like a like an art piece almost like performance art and then you involve the whole community sort of I, I do consider it art um, because it's a I, I consider that several stuff are art yes, that usually people don't don't see as such um, and aligning all the pieces into a masterpiece of experience I think that the, that has to do with art yes, so so yes if you ask me I feel that every Labitkov is a and it's made it with love and passion, and that is for definition art. So, yeah. uh, we we all the team lead her house, lead the home, and come to El Salvador for two weeks to prepare La Vidconf. And each year is the same. We move one city to other. Rodolfo leaves his family and and made that crazy, crazy, crazy conference. And I I don't know. Is, is a special experience in itself, but what trying to bring uh, the country is special too. And I, I think, I feel La Bitconf doesn't have uh, speakers, have friends, because they come for free, they make a huge effort crossing the world to come to Latin America, and I guess that is huge. Yes, and in the same way, we don't have sponsors, we have supporters, yes. And, and, and that is because usually they would pay whatever we ask uh, in advance without even knowing who's coming, yes, because they support what we do, they believe in what we're doing. And even if we go to a country that is non-commercially smart, because as I say, this is a non-commercial event, it is commercial once you are in the event, yes, once you mm -hmm. get connections and business done. But it's not thought as a commercial event. It's thought mm -hmm. like a content event, yes, like a like a concept event. So when we go, we need to go to the country where we think it's relevant to talk about Bitcoin, not where we think we will do more money. Otherwise, I would have done the Bitcoin in the big in Brazil five times, yes, and in Mexico three times, and we would have turned this into a master brand, yes, that keeps doing different activities in, in other countries. It has never been the concept behind a Bitcoin. Yes, it's not doing the biggest event and growing the event every single year. It's more about doing the event that each country needs to host, to, to make new believers and to see new trees in different countries. So do you think you would, you would um, will it always be Latin America based? Because, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. If we were to do something outside Latin America, first, I don't know who, <laughs> but, but supposing that we were to do something, we would name it a different. In 2018, I was uh, about to do a BitConf. A BitConf was, was African Bitcoin Conference. Yes. And I had like a one month of travels uh, to like pre booked in, in mm -hmm. Africa to decide which country would be the host of, of it. But then I had to cancel everything because of the, of, of the COVID. Mm -hmm. yeah? So if we do something different, we might name it different because the Bitcoin is Latin American Bitcoin conference. It makes no sense for us to do it in, in, in another way. We could have gone to Miami. We could have gone to, to Spain if you want, like, like come on, makes sense. People in Spain would be glad if we, I mean, those who know the Bitcoin yes, would be glad of we taking this down there. But, and, and brands would be glad and everyone would be glad. 
-hmm. but we think we don't need to see it there. What I'm going to see in Miami just would be a nice conference and a lot of people coming, not, not we fulfilling a role of changing new people's mind. Yes, the same in Europe. I wouldn't be changing new people's mind. So, so it should be like a different event, like a different kind of, of event, not the same focus on creating new believers that they can lead and not be followers. And this is also something very relevant. This is the first one in the opening. So uh, we, we try to, to say this, that we do it doing this in Latin America is to help them, help Latin Americans to believe that they can lead, not to be followers of what's happening in Europe or happening in, in, in America. It's a non -perm it's a permissionless technology. Yes, it's a patentless technology usually. If it were for great right, uh, it's a patentless technology. So, so we always wanted to see that concept also in in in, in the region. Yes, mm -hmm. and we are proud of having El Salvador as one of the leading countries doing this. Is which is something very very criticized in the space in the politically in El Salvador. Yes, why are we the first movers instead of keep being as always, yes, the tail of big lions or the tail of mouse, actually. Um, so, so I think that this movie is, is courageous and, and, and smart, and there's always someone that is the first one. And I'm glad it was from Latin America. I love it. The, um, any last remarks for today? Things you're excited about or would like to tell uh, an audience about La Bitcoin? Oh, inviting me to join. Bye. Yes, to join us and um, for the people who can travel to El Salvador, uh, we have a online hold experience too. And you can join us in the streaming and you can download the app and make some networking, doing your mm -hmm. own profile and all that stuff. So if you can't be with that, couldn't, uh, if the people can't be with us in this meeting, in this exceptional LaVitco, please join us online and watch our speakers and what is going on because we have prepared a special edition for the online streaming too. Yes, and actually there is content, there is there is some part of the government also talking about what's going on and, and it's something that you would like to listen from outside, no? I mean, which was experience of putting this law in place, which is experience what's behind the law in the future. These kind of things are also talks relevant for people from outside. And, but I would say also, if you still have time to decide to join, yes, I think this, I don't know when this is streamed, if it's live or not, but, but I mean, if, if there's still time to decide, I think that it would be a, the best week in the, in the year and in the, in, in the following years to come, yes. Uh, first, because the Vicons won't be repeated anywhere, anyway, yes. Um, but, but because it's a Bitcoin week, a full week of activities and emotion around Bitcoin. I love it. Thanks so much for talking to me, guys. I'm, I'm very excited for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Alex.